Good morning, fellow privateers. This is uh, this is take two on the week ahead video. I realized that the first take, the video quality was still bad, but I think I fixed it. Something to do with the monitor, the new monitor. Um, so I'm hoping this will work. Um, you don't have to listen to it twice because I'm going to pretty much repeat what I said the first go around. Um, take a quick look at the, well, first of all, let's, congratulations to Tiger Woods. Good to see him back. That's an exciting uh, early, uh, early, uh, early round, uh, early part of the morning. Masters, they wanted to get the, uh, they wanted to get the round in before the weather came. And as I'm looking out our, my window, we're probably have two inches of snow. I thought winter was over in this hellhole I live in. Anyhow, so let's get right down to it. It's a shortened week with Good Friday. All the markets are closed um, this coming Friday. We do have some economic data to cover. Um, weekend news, typical Trump tweet saying that the Fed should be cutting rates. The Fed's job should be to support the equity markets. I mean, I cannot wait until my grandchildren are studying economic history in 20 years or whatever it is because it's just it, it, it's just amazing that this guy is in charge and uh, I don't know, don't get me going anyhow um, the IMF wrapped up their meetings on Friday I believe or maybe it was yesterday and the overall mood was not nearly as pessimistic as it uh, could have been and as we were expecting. They're thinking that the emerging market space, probably led by, you know, mainly by China and all of their efforts to uh, support their, their, their uh, economy, will lead the charge in, in, a, uh, some, in, you know, kind of getting the global economy back on track. They do think that Europe will continue to underperform Asia and the U.S., and Italy is still a main risk post the EU elections. Uh, they're also not expecting much of an inflation pickup globally in 2019 or 20. Um, we do, just touching on some of the important data points, we have some Fed surveys out of the Empire in Philadelphia. We've got the U.S. retail sales. We've got bunch of China data, I believe, is on Wednesday, should be Thursday morning, Asia. Um, with Kiwi CPI, we got China retail, industrial production, and the widely followed GDP, Q1 GDP. We also have CAD CPI this week. Uh, backing up to two, or I skipped over Tuesday, we have the RBA minutes, and we have ZEW out of Germany and Europe. Um, and Thursday, which is Friday morning, for Australia, we have the Aussie jobs number. That'll be closely watched. Especially, we'll, we'll look at the Aussie chart, the Aussie crosses. We're, you know, approaching some significant resistance levels. Uh, we have U.S. retail sales and CAD retail. So that's kind of a, you know, with the shortened week, they're, kind of, they're jamming everything in uh, all at once. Um, here's an interesting, um, interesting little chart. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Let me make this bigger for you. Can I make it bigger? I can't make it bigger. There we go. Um, looks like I was reading that the U.S. is now the weakest surprise index against the all the other majors and EM included. Um, and you can see Canada is the is the strongest. So we haven't been, we haven't seen this type of underperformance in U.S. economic data um, in a long time. It, I believe these levels, this near this minus 60, is goes all the way back to 2017. So, you know, maybe, maybe some of this is, you know, the reason why the dollar came under a bit of selling pressure later in the week against. Uh, the euro and against you know the euro is barely beating the U.S. But you know you look at CAD, Aussie, and Norway, even sterling, um, definitely outperforming 
the likes of Sweden, uh, Japan, and Euro and the Eurozone, and then the, the United States. So something to keep an eye on, you know, for you fundamental traders out there. Um, let me get to my notes. Uh, we do have earnings season coming up here. Um, a lot of earnings coming out this week and the next couple weeks. We have some more banks. We have the Apple earnings on uh, April 30th is going to be extremely important and the market will be paying close attention to that. Uh, let's get to the charts. So we had a, here's the British pound here at the upper left. Uh, you can see this orange, uh, this orange week here, this orange week here. Uh, so we've had two inside weeks, very, very quiet week. This range was only 131, it was about a 110 point range in cable, which is amazing. So we'll be watching either side of last week's range for direction. Uh, if we go down here in the lower left, we've got the dollar one uh, also had an inside week just barely and then if I look at the daily there's some interesting daily charts here is an outside reversal or bullish engulfing day higher for the Aussie dollar uh, just got it there's you know there uh, I'll get to the individual charts in a minute and then dollar one which makes sense that's just an inverse of what the Australian dollar does um, Let's see here. All sorts of issues with here. That's inside outside, low chart layout, fractals, and let's get to a all right, this is what I want to do. Here's a daily euro chart. We're gonna start out with the euro. So what you can see we had this high, 118, touched a couple here, pierced this trend line. This is a daily, and we closed right on it, pierced it again, closed below it. This line now comes in right around 113.50 this week. British pound, 131.50 seems to be very important, even above last week's high, 131.35. Um, Let's go. I had a trend line drawn there. I don't know why it's not. So you can see this downtrend line right here, though. Um, somewhat steep, but notable. If I can get it to connect to that. Jesus. Let me widen this out. It even comes in a little bit lower. It looks like today it comes in 131.20. So I would say just to be safe, buying a break of 131.35 last week's high. Aussie dollar uh, bumping up against the 200-day, which is just above 72 cents. This market is short. Aussie still, or short the Antipodeans. And you can see on this daily trend line, we closed pretty much you know, a couple ticks over it. Uh, dollar Canada, we have this triangle forming, you can see it here, and I would say a break either side would be telling for the next direction. Dollar Mex, very, very important support down here at this uh, 1875 down to 1865 is, uh, is really key, and that's, you know, showing risk on at the moment. Dollar Yen was a bit higher, it, it sold off early in the week and then rallied pretty hard. There was some M&A activity out of, um, I believe it was a Euro Yen trade. I think they finished things up on the last day on Friday during the Tokyo fix and you know maybe they had a little bit of residual to do during the New York hours. Um, dollar index for us this 95, 75, 95, 80, 96 cents, somewhere down here looks to be the key. You know, so we're still still a ways away from that. Um, and then on the top side, 97.70, 97.80. So that, you know, it's pretty much respecting this range. We did have a couple blips here early in the year below. Um, you know, our guess is that lower dollar versus higher dollar over the next few weeks. S&P, 
the highest daily close, all time highest daily close is 29.40. The highest weekly close is 29.32. We got up to 20, we closed at 29.11. Uh, if we start taking out those old high closes, I think that uh, we could see a pretty swift move higher up to 3,000. Seems to be a lot of people's targets. And the NASDAQ, the, the highest uh, weekly close is. Uh, 76.74. We close at 76.54 on Friday. You know, if we could start taking out these highs, then I don't see why we can't go to 8,000 um, in a hurry. Um, let's take a look at the gold chart. That's kind of getting interesting. You know, maybe below this 1280. I, you know, I think it's 1275, 1280 is pretty big support in here. Um, we can draw a little trend line from that. Remember this. This was that sp that spike low, and then it re reversed and bullish engulfed. So, just in a you know kind of a short-term daily look at it, these areas are important. Um, the line. This is Friday, so the line is coming in somewhere around 12.85 as support. Um, what else are we looking at? Oil. Oil is kind of interesting. There's a weekly closed off the highs but here's the daily one two a uh, couple indecision bars here an inside bar there we had the big down move on Thursday and we rallied again on Friday on the open and it, but it closed right here this is a very ugly looking bar this is going to be uh, telling for the next uh, the next move in risk in general and it's highly correlated with the S&P so watch this space keep an eye on oil I think that uh, you know if this does roll over then equities maybe run out of steam uh, what else we got daily sentiment index um, I can't I don't I don't have the I'll just read it to you the S&P 500 is at 90 the Nasdaq's 87 um, crude oils 80 euro stocks DAX and CAC current are all mid 80s and the Nikkei is 93 so again this is the percentage of bulls and uh, they seem pretty elevated the, vol the the VIX is down at 17 so we like to look at anything over 80 and under 20 that gets on our radar and then we start looking very closely at intraday and uh, intraday and, and, and daily charts for reversals of those narratives other than that uh, again pretty quiet news over the weekend I think that uh, we'll wrap it up here. You'll hear from us on the European Open. Oh, and one more thing. We are on uh, Privateer FX is going to be on the FACE webinar, which is Dale Pinkert and Forex Analytics daily webinar. So we'll be on, I believe it's 9 a.m. Eastern time, uh, 8 a.m. Central. We're, we'll come on, and uh, it'll be kind of a 20 to 30 minute uh interview about our trading journey you know how we got where, where we are 25 plus years um, later well. and uh, you know some of the hiccups along the way and the failures and the successes and it should be entertaining and uh, you know we really like uh, we have a lot of respect for these the forex analytics guys they do great work anyhow that's a wrap have a great week ahead and we will speak to you on the European Open all the best. Cheers.